It is far better to be free to govern or misgovern yourself, than to be governed by anybody else. I am not African because I was born in Africa, but because Africa was born in me. Action without thought is empty. Thought without action is blind. It is clear that we must find an African solution to our problems, and that this can only be found in African unity. Divided we are weak, united, Africa could become one of the greatest forces for good in the world. Those who would judge us merely by the heights we have achieved, would do well to remember the depths from which we started. As far as I am concerned, I am in the knowledge that death can never extinguish the torch which I have lit in Ghana and Africa. Long after I am dead and gone, the light will continue to burn and be borne aloft, giving light and guidance to all people. Capitalism is a development by refinement from feudalism, just as feudalism is development by refinement from slavery. Capitalism is but the gentleman's method of slavery. The forces that unite us are intrinsic, and greater than the superimposed influences that keep us apart. Africa is a paradox which illustrates and highlights neocolonialism. Her earth is rich, yet the products that come from above and below the soil continue to enrich, not Africans predominantly, but groups and individuals who operate to Africa's impoverishment. The independence of Ghana is meaningless, unless it is linked up with the total liberation of the African continent. Freedom is not something that one people can bestow on another as a gift. They claim it as their own, and none can keep it from them. Revolutions are brought about by men, by men who think as men of action, and act as men of thought. We face neither east nor west, we face forward. I believe strongly and sincerely, that with the deep-rooted wisdom, and dignity, the innate respect for human lives, the intense humanity that is our heritage, the African race, united under one federal government, will emerge not as just another world block to flaunt its wealth, and strength, but as a great power whose greatness is indestructible, because it is built not on fear, envy, and suspicion, nor one at the expense of others, but founded on hope, trust, friendship, and directed to the good of all mankind. Countrymen, the task ahead is great indeed, and heavy is the responsibility, and yet, it is a noble and glorious challenge, a challenge which calls for the courage to dream, the courage to believe, the courage to dare, the courage to do, the courage to envision, the courage to fight, the courage to work, the courage to achieve, to achieve the highest excellencies and the fullest greatness of man. Dare we ask for more in life? Africa is one continent, one people, and one nation. The notion that in order to have a nation, it is necessary for there to be a common language, a common territory, and common culture has failed to stand the test of time, or the scrutiny of scientific definition of objective reality. The community of economic life is the major feature within a nation, and it is the economy which holds together the people living in a territory. It is on this basis that the new Africans recognize themselves as potentially one nation, whose dominion is the entire African continent. For centuries, Europeans dominated the African continent. The white man arrogated to himself, the right to rule and to be obeyed by the non-white, 
His mission, he claimed, was to civilize Africa. Under this cloak, the Europeans robbed the continent of vast riches, and inflicted unimaginable suffering on the African people. The result of neocolonialism, is that foreign capital is used for the exploitation rather than, for the development of the less developed parts of the world. Investment under neocolonialism increases rather than, decreases, the gap between the rich and poor countries of the world. Independence is only the prelude to a new and more involved struggle, for the right to conduct our own economic and social affairs. Any meaningful humanism, must begin from egalitarianism, and must lead to objectively chosen policies for safeguarding and sustaining egalitarianism. We were still regarded as representing the infancy of mankind. Our highly sophisticated culture was said to be simple, and paralyzed by inertia, and we had to be encumbered with tutelage. If we are to achieve revolutionary socialism, then we must avoid any suggestion that will imply, that there is any separation between the socialist world, and a third world. Never before in history, has such a sweeping fervor for freedom expressed itself in great mass movements, which are driving down the bastions of empire. This wind of change blowing through Africa, as I have said before, is no ordinary wind. It is a raging hurricane against which the old order cannot stand. For this end Africa needs a new type of citizen, a dedicated, modest, honest, and informed man. A man submerges self in service to the nation and mankind. A man who abhors greed and detests vanity. A new type of man whose humility is his strength, and whose integrity is his greatness. All the fair brave words, spoken about freedom, that had been broadcast to the four corners of the earth, took seed and grew where they had not been intended. A state in the grip of neocolonialism, is not master of its own destiny. It is this factor which makes neocolonialism, such a serious threat to world peace. The best way of learning to be an independent sovereign state, is to be an independent sovereign state. We prefer self-government with, danger to servitude and tranquility. Socialism is not spontaneous. It does not arise of itself. It has abiding principles according to which, the major means of production, and distribution ought to be socialized, if exploitation of the many by the few is to be prevented, if, that is to say, egalitarianism in the economy is to be protected. There is a close connection between socio-political development, the struggle between social classes, and the history of ideologies. In general, intellectual movements closely reflect the trends of economic developments. In communal society, where there are virtually no class divisions, man's productive activities on outlook, and culture is less discernible. Account must be taken of the psychology of conflicting classes. The masses of the people of Africa, are crying for unity. We all want a united Africa, united not only in our concept of what unity connotes, but united in our common desire to move forward together, in dealing with all the problems that can best be solved only on a continental basis. The essence of neocolonialism, is that the state which is subject to it is in theory, independent, and has all the outward trappings of international sovereignty. In reality, its economic system and thus its political policy is directed from outside, The traditional face of Africa, includes an attitude towards man, which can only be described as being socialist. 
The fortunes of the African Revolution are closely linked with the worldwide struggle against imperialism. It does not matter where the battle erupts, be it in Africa, Asia or Latin America, the mastermind and master hand at work are the same. The oppressed and exploited people are striving for their freedom against exploitation and suppression. Ghana must not. Ghana cannot be neutral in the struggle of the oppressed against the oppressor. It is far easier for the proverbial camel to pass through the needle's eye, hump and all, than for an erstwhile colonial administration to give sound and honest counsel of a political nature to its liberated territory. Of all literature I studied, the book that did more than any other to fire my enthusiasm was Philosophy and Opinions of Marcus Garvey. It is only the ending of capitalism, colonialism, imperialism and neo-colonialism and the attainment of world communism that can provide the conditions under which the race question can finally be abolished and eliminated. All people of African descent, whether they live in North or South America, the Caribbean, or in any part of the world, are Africans and belong to the African nation. The total liberation and unification of Africa under an all-African socialist government must be the primary objective of all black revolutionaries throughout the world. It is an objective which when achieved will bring about the fulfillment of the aspirations of Africans and people of African descent everywhere. It will at the same time advance the triumph of the international socialist revolution. We have awakened. We will not sleep anymore. Today, from now on, there is a new African in the world. We must unite now or perish. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you one of my heroes, Dr. Asajifu Nana Kwame Nkrumah. Ah, abo! At long last, the battle has ended. And thus, Ghana, your beloved country, is free forever. And here again, I want to take the opportunity to thank the chiefs and people of this country, the youth, the farmers, the women, who have so nobly fought and won this battle. Also, I want to thank the valiant ex-servicemen who have so cooperated with me in this mighty task of freeing our country from foreign rule and imperialism. And as I pointed out at our party conference at Sorbonne, I made it quite clear that from now on today, we must change our attitudes, our minds. We must realize that from now on, we are no more a colonial, but a free and independent people. But also, as I pointed out, that also entails hard work. I am depending upon the millions of the country, the chiefs and people, to help me to reshape the destiny of this country. We are prepared to build it up and make it a nation that will be respected by every other nation in the world. We know 
hope we are going to have difficult beginnings. But again, I am relying upon your support. I am relying upon your hard work. Seeing you in these thousands, it doesn't matter how far my eye goes, I can see that you are here in your millions. And my last warning to you is that you ought to stand firm behind us so that we can prove to the world that when the African is given a chance, he can show to the world that he's somebody. <laughs> we are both working. We shall no more go back to sleep anymore. Today, from now on, there is a new African in the world. That new African is ready to fight his own battle and show that after all, the black man is capable of managing his own affairs. We are going to demonstrate to the world, to the other nations, young as we are, that we are prepared to lay our own foundation. As I said in the assembly just a minute ago, I made it point that we are going to say that we create our own African personality and identity. It's the only way in which we can show the world that we are ready for our own battle. But today, may I call upon you all that at this great day, let us all remember that nothing in the world can be done unless it's had the purpose and support of God. We have done the battle, and we again rededicate ourselves not only in the struggle to emancipate other territories in Africa. Our independence is meaningless unless it is linked up with the total liberation of the African continent. Let us now, fellow Ghanaians, let us now ask for God's blessing. And for only two seconds, in your thousands and millions, I want to ask you to pause only for one minute and give thanks to Almighty God for having led us through obstacles, difficulties, imprisonments, hardship and suffering to have brought us to the end of our trouble today. One minute silence. Ghana is free forever. Thank you for watching this video. Please kindly like, comment, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Until next time, stay golden.